Hello and welcome to another free code session. My name is Jason Bach and I'm going to try to finish out this range stuff in Spackle. It, again, it's been a lot of fun because it went into, I'm actually using generic math interfaces and the static abstract stuff. I kind of think the way it was meant to. So it's, it's cool to see this evolve and change. I've done some more stuff. I've gotten rid of the compare to's, which was a good thing to do and actually just saying start and end and all the tests pass and everything's good. So we're going to do a couple more changes on this. Go back there. No, not that. Yeah. Yeah. There, there, there is what you want to do, Jason. Okay. So we're going to add a contains and I think I had a contains where you just give it a number or something of type T should be up here and you could say intersect would contain, but I don't want to do like an intersect. And I want to say, hey, here's a range. You tell me if that is contained within this one. In other words, if I intersect the two, are the numbers for the start and the end on the intersect the same as my own? Okay. So we're going to say, check to see if the given value is within the current range. The value to check. Yeah, so now we're just going to make this a range of t, okay? And what are we going to say here? We're going to make this a block body because we need to say our inner intersection is equal to this dot intersect with the value, okay? And then what we do is we say return if the intersection is not null and intersection uh, start is exactly equal to this dot start and intersection dot end is exactly equal to this dot end. Yeah, there you go. And so this is a very simple way to say this because if, if the intersection was like the, the thing you're giving me was part of it, then these two numbers wouldn't be exactly the same. Something's going to be different. And so it doesn't contain it. There's part, there's a part of it that's outside of it. If none of it overlaps, then we get a null. If all of it is inside of this, then that would be that. If that's bigger than me, the range, then the start and the ends are going to be different. Okay, so I think that's what we want to do. So we did range tests here. And I'm, I think I've got contains methods already, right? I should have contains methods already, right? Oh my God, I don't have contains methods. Oh, I'm a bad person. Contain, oh yeah, I do. Well, what's the problem here? Oh, well, ain't that a hoot? Well, it contains and wait, where's the other can? Did I just did I do something wrong? What's the boo boo here? Wait, contains. Wait, what did did I actually? No, I couldn't have. Did I actually overwrite? I'm gonna watch this later, and I'm gonna be like, Jason, did you just realize what you did? You overwrote what was there. Oh my God, just back this all up, back the bus up. Let's, <laughs> I could just look at the uh, git. Yep, I bet that's what I did. Yeah, I just changed it. Oh my God, <laughs> it should be a T value. Okay, so, and that, there we go. Yay, thank God for undo and redo. Woo, okay, so that's good, okay, so. Check containment with range. So in this case, we're going to say, does the range contain a new range of int where this is like four and nine? Okay, nine. And that should be true, right? Yes. Okay, why are you complaining? Oh, that has to go there. Okay, yeah, you're right. Okay, okay, cool. Now we're going to say 3 and 10 should be true. Let's do something completely outside the range, which we'll do 
zero to two, that should be false. Okay. We want something that says one and f four, that should be false. And I'm already seeing I can make this a test case with the start and end and then the expand. Let's do that. Test case four, nine, true. Okay. So we want to say, oh, <laughs> well, we can do ants. That's fine. Yeah, we, we don't need to worry about that. So we're going to say ant start, ant, and bool expected value. So we're going to say, assert that the range that we're giving with the start and the end is equal to expected value. There. Okay. So now we can have all these other cases in here. Much better. And we should do that up here too. That's the right way to do this. So we're going to say 3 and 10, 0 and 2 false, a couple more here, 1 and 4 should be false, and then we stop because we realize we need to do it the better way. So we want to say 2 and 11, that should also fall out of the range, and then we can take these off, it doesn't really save a lot of code, but I think that's the right way to do it. Okay. So what does this give us? Four passed and one failed. Let me see if I can see what the failure is. That should be true. That should be true. Zero should be false. One and four should be false. Two and 11. Which one's false? Yeah, you're not going to tell me here. I have to go here to do that. Four and nine. Really? That's surprising. Of all the ones that I thought would succeed, it was that one. <laughs> okay. So let's do this. Oh, that's right. We want to do this slightly different. We want to say, is the start contained in us and the end contained in us? That's a lot simpler, actually. So we want to say return, this contains value start, and this contains value end. And that's it. That's all you got to do. You don't even need to do an intersection. Okay. And then that can be a block body. Why are you not barking about that? Oh, fine, whatever. There. There. Okay. So now let's run all these again. And now they all should pass. And they do. Okay, good. So we've got that done. So we're going to say done here. Okay. And we're going to say commit 41 added contains range of T. Commit push. Okay. So we got that. What was the, there's two more things in here. Oh yeah, conversion and then remove all the range extensions. Okay. So how are we going to do this? We were thinking of maybe doing like a public static range of int, create one based off of a range. Range. Okay. And so what we would say here is new range start value range end value and that's it right yeah that's and that's all we can really do here we really can't do much of you know because this is literally a range of indices that indices are ints and that's as far as you can go but we can say um, create from range okay take that off Test public static create from range 
and I guess we could, we could say do it right from a range ourselves, like one of our ranges and do that, which would be fine. But you can easily just say new range, range out start, range that end. I mean, it's whatever. If our range is equal to, we could say three, five, right? Because that should give you a range. Yep. And actually, we could say <laughs> range. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I forgot about that. If we do this on the generic here, yeah, we don't want to do that. <laughs> do well, yeah, because we don't. I was thinking we could do this so your T would be like a bite, or but then you have. You don't want to do that. Okay, so what I think we want to have here is a public static class range. Okay, and then we do that. Except this range is going to class system in that range. There. Kind of stinks. Not really happy about it. But otherwise you have to say range of int dot create and no you know what I just realized we have one place that we want to keep the range extensions around okay and that's this so this is system range okay there we go so this is what should have the create on it so we don't want to obsolete everything from range extensions we want to keep this around, okay? That makes a lot more sense. And then this would not be here. This would actually live still over here, okay? But all the rest of the tests are going to go away because we don't need them anymore. So we're going to say 3.5, except we can't do, yeah, we have to say that's our range dot create right correct I put that there yes oh <laughs> self self start self and and there we go now we should be able to say assert multiple by the way, I love the, the assert multiple here rather than X unit. I don't know if I've complained about this in a previous episode, but X unit added a multiple, but there's multiple actions that you have to pass in. And this is just, here's an action, do all, do all of your assertions, and N unit is smart enough to go, okay, you did five assertions, two of them failed, and I'll gather the two. I, I don't like, you know, and I, I kind of ranted about this before. I If, you know, over there, that's my work machine. We use X unit. I use X unit. There. Text messages are coming in. But on my day to day job, I use N unit. And I personally, whenever I hear somebody go, well, X unit is the standard of .NET, I'm like, no, it's not. And in fact, maybe you should look at N unit because I personally find it easier and more intuitive than X unit is. I just do. Okay. So, anyway, assert that range.start is equal to <laughs> range.end. You're funny. Yeah, that's not right at all. Okay. And then that the range.end is equal to five. And that, that's all we need. And this, this actually, yeah, this is a much better choice to keep it as a range extension and that you say on it, create. We could say convert, but whatever. The, the name, create, convert, transmorgify, I don't know. Keep it there. Okay, so now we have that. That's done rather nicely. And now we have to obsolete all these. Let's commit first. 41 added create extension method on system.range. I can just say range because ours is generic and that one isn't. Okay, so now we have to go through all of these. And first of all, let's do this creates a new 
C, C ref range of that range of, and we could say range event there, given a C range. And that's that one, okay. The C, C ref range to use turns a new range that int instance there okay now the sadness and we're gonna go right to obsolete okay it's not a die we don't care about that we're just gonna string message and bool error <laughs> this api is no longer supported use range of t instead and this would be a true okay so we're going to do that on all of these i don't know why this feels weird but it kind of does all right and on our range we do have union intersect partition yeah we've got them all good okay so now that means all of these go away. This is the only one we care about. Okay. And we want to go and arrange tests here. And like I said, check containment. We will make this a test case of five true and two. I find test cases to be a little bit easier to 20. So true, 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 false. I know you're all complaining because I don't actually have this parameterized. Int value, bool expected result. So we say here assert that range contains the value is equal to expected result. Close that down, do that. Just run this quick and let's make sure that this works. We could also put in the expected range to make with the start and end values, possibly, probably, whatever, okay. Less than start than, we could do the same thing here, I guess, if we wanted to. These are a little bit tougher to do. Yeah, bytes, I love that. That's so cool. I love it. Let's, let's run all the tests and let's see what happens. Beauty. Absolutely lovely. Absolutely lovely. Okay, so last thing to close this out. Let's say done here. Git commit. Obsoleted a bunch of range extension methods. And these will probably go away if I ever do a 13 and they will just completely go away. And if you really needed them, they're on a previous version or just make it yourself. I don't know. It's like, why, why get rid of them? Why keep them? Because again, it, you know, why not keep them? It's because they're really not the right abstraction over range. I don't own the type. Generally, you should make extension methods on things you don't own. Not to say you can't do that. Obviously, I'm doing that here, and I think this is the right, well, here. I think this is right here. <laughs> this is the right place to do something like that. That makes sense in my mind. Okay. But otherwise, no, not really. You know, I could, you know, you could argue then that the range, this should actually create go on the range, but then you're doing it on a generic type, which isn't ideal either. So I could argue about this for a while, but I got all that in here now. I think I committed that. Yes, I did. Let's go to the change log and make sure that we have that. Yes, done. So we're gonna say removed obsoleted 
a number of range extension methods and that's from issue 41 and then we're also going to say added a number of methods to range of t there again it's funny because this became like from this this is what it led to and we could say, well, what did I add here? I don't know. I don't remember. Partition. Um, look at your docs, Jason. Partition contains. Yeah, that's fine. So we can just say added partition and contains to range. I think that's all I did. And then we can also say here added create create extension method four and then we can say range here there that that will be all okay so let's git commit this 41 updated change log done save and that'll be it for this episode i will do the merge and i'll close out the issue but yeah this is much better. I really like the way that this has evolved. And I, 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 you may have noticed here in my notes, I was playing with this idea of like a ring number where you could have a, a binary number, but it's in a ring field. So if you did an add on it, but it went past it, it would like go around the ring and come there. And are those rings fields, you know, that's, that's stuff I barely knew when I was in grad school because I had to learn it and I don't remember the precise mathematical definitions of it. But you, know, you think of a clock, it goes from zero to 59, you go to 60, it goes back to zero. So something like that, I think that might be an interesting demonstration of how you can use these, bin these uh, not binary, these new generic math interfaces. So different idea altogether. Anyway, this is done. Thank you all for watching. Oh, wait, no, I got to save that. And I want to take this and put it out of here and put that just in a new, yeah, there, save. Now I can get committed. Now watch I'll do off camera. Thank you all for watching. Leave comments and questions below. See you in the next episode.